So good afternoon, everyone. Do you hear me? Okay. Yes, good afternoon. Can we put ourselves in the presence of the Lord? We will uh, begin this uh, Bible journey with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our God, our Good Shepherd, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. We praise you for your power, which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. You give gifts to your people for the good of your church. You equip and train your people to carry out the good works you have prepared for us in advance. As we meet today, we ask that you would provide wisdom, guidance, and direction. Everything we need is founded in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With the intercession Amen. of the Blessed Mary, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, Amen. the Lord Amen. is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good Amen. afternoon, everyone. And we may call on our parish priest of Good Shepherd, Father Wilmer Cacao. Father. So good afternoon po sa ating lahat. And I'm very happy that we are starting already our learnings, studying of the Bible. Ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Christ or God, sabi nga po ni St. Jerome. It is so fitting that as Christians, we need to study the word of the Lord. Himayin natin yung salita ng Diyos at yan ang magdadala sa atin ng kaalaman na magdadala sa atin ng mas malalim na pananampalataya at pagkilala sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Ito po sana ang magdadala sa atin ng mas malalim pa na pagunawa sa mga salita ng Diyos at sa pakikipagtungo natin sa ating kakwatao. Maraming salamat din kay Sir sa pagtanggap po niya ng Bible timeline na ito. Ganon din ang mga magigiting na katikista dito po sa ating parokya ng Good Shepherd. So maraming salamat po and God bless us. Maraming salamat, Father Wilmer. And we will now introduce to you our uh, speaker for the whole course of Bible Timeline. And we have here Sister Minda. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, our uh, lecturer who will accompany us sa ating Bible journey. Ah, tayo po ay uh, tunay na blessed na pumayag si Brother, ang ating speaker po. Siya po ay si Brother Dick Barreras. Siya po ay may master degree on uh, religious uh, religious studies doon na natapos niya doon sa Don Bosco Theology School with a degree with an honor of magna cum laude. Siya din ngayon ay ongoing panibagong masteral degree para sa theology. Ah uh, Sa ngayon, he, he is currently serving sa, sa uh, presentation of the child Jesus at, head, at uh, uh, buong, na, siya ay member din ng Couples for Christ at uh, siya po ay Mm. I am sorry, ha. 
nawala yung aking <laughs> copy. Sige pa. Um, biglang nakat eh. Sorry. Siya po ngayon na nagsiserve sa, sa uh, presentation of the child Jesus and uh, very active member din ng Couples for Christ um, at nag-handle siya ng anong ministry yun pa? Ng formation po. Formation ng, sa PCJ. Mm-hmm. So, pasensya yes. na po biglang na, na ano tong aking cellphone kaya hindi ko makumpleto. Okay. I'm sorry brother Dick, medyo nagfalter ako sa aking duty. But anyway, I most gladly, very happily na amin we welcome you na uh, sa aming dito sa aming bikaryato para kami po ay mag, mag-aral, mag-journey sa Bible. Thank you very much po and welcome brother Dick. Uh, marami pong salamat uh, Sister Minda for uh, that uh, very warm uh, welcome and introduction. Uh, Father Wilmer, mar- magandang hapon po at uh, maraming salamat po for gracing our course today. At uh, pagsisikapan po namin, Father, na sana ay uh, bi- um, ma- matupad namin yung inyong mga expectation. Uh, ito naman po ay foundational course pa lang naman sa Bible. So sana by this lumawak ang ating fire or interest no in studying the Bible further. So thank you very much and uh, a blessed day to you all brothers and sisters uh, uh, and uh, welcome dito po sa ating uh, uh, study study course no na a study of the Bible timeline no. So um As we start, brothers and sisters, let me uh, allow me to share my screen with you. Kita niyo na po ba yung aking screen? Yes. Okay, so um brothers and sisters uh, um I am so happy to see that there are so many of you here this afternoon and I hope we can do justice to this particular course. So as I said earlier, um what we will have in the following well, it's around 14 sessions including this session is a study of the Bible timeline. But before we start again, I know nag opening prayer na tayo, but since We are now about to study the word of God. Let me start this session, you no, know, this study with uh, a short prayer lang naman, you no. Know? So, um let me invite everybody you know, to please be still. And uh remember that we are always in the presence of the Lord and the Lord is always with us. And so, Father, we just praise and thank you for this wonderful afternoon, for allowing us to study your word. And uh, Father, we know that you will continue to be here together with uh, your uh, son, Jesus Christ, whom we, whose word we will study, and together with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Uh, Jesus, said to him, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through this belief you may have life in his name. And brothers and sisters, let us all join each other in prayer to the, to, for guidance from the Holy Spirit. Read in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. And guard me then 
O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. And uh, so let me greet everybody. It's a good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No, uh, kasi ganito yung brothers and sisters, whenever I talk about the Word of God, I always greet everybody, good morning. Bakit? Because it's always a new day whenever we talk about the Word of God. The Word of God starts something new in us that is always a new day for us as we talk about the Word of God. So let us, uh, uh, let, let me just uh, invite everybody no, to unmute themselves. And greet each other a, a blessed morning. It's a good morning, brothers and uh, sisters. No, so let's greet. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning brother. Good morning. Dick. Good morning. Good morning to all. Good morning to all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so have a blessed morning, everyone. Yes, it's it's indeed a blessed morning. So may I again Hola, invite you to, today, ba? to mute yeah. yourself. Okay. No? Mute, please mute yourselves yeah. again. So, dahil ano po eh, no? uh, nagre-request po kami na, na we keep on mute while we are having the lecture kasi napakadami po natin today. And uh, it is best to mute ourselves so that everybody will uh, be able to listen to uh, the lecture no? or to the talk. No? So okay. So um, today is uh, session one of our Bible timeline study, and it is an introduction to reading and understanding the Bible. No. Um, okay. So let me just start. No? Um, let me just start this session. Na, nakikita niyo na ba ako? Yes. Brothers and sisters. Okay. Uh, so let me just uh, start this uh, session today. No? So this is our first session. And an introductory session to the study of the Bible timeline. Okay. So again, it is an introduction to the reading and understanding the Bible. No? Uh, kasi po, uh, hindi po natin masisimulan ang lahat ng ating uh, uh, Bible timeline study kung hindi natin pag-aaralan kung paano tamang basahin at unawain ang ating uh, uh, Biblia, no? yung nababasa natin sa ating Biblia. And so, um, let me just start by saying that a lot of people, no? a lot of people say, that the greatest story ever told. Eh, ano po? Alam niyo ba? They say that the greatest story ever told is the Bible, the book of the Bible. No? The Bible. And uh, why do they say this? There are so many things that um, um, pwede natin masabi kung bakit sinasabi greatest story ever told ito. For the, at least, well, secularly, uh, pwede natin sabihin na because this, the Bible is the largest selling book of all time. The best selling book of all time. Alam nyo ba yun? Na to date, oh, wag na to date. Umpisahan muna natin, ano ang sabi ng Guinness Book of World, World Records no, noong 1995? Uh, there are, sa kanilang records, there are over 5 billion copies of the Bible sold around as of 1995. So that makes it the first, the the top selling book of all time but later on somewhere towards the late late 90s uh, uh sabi na nila it has already reached six over 6 billion copies and hindi pa ho kasama diyan yung mga hindi nila nalalaman you know? and hindi pa if we look at uh, the bible today uh ang dami nang nagre-reproduce ng bible hindi lang officially hindi lang yung mga for sale you no know? Uh, pati online, now that we have something online, I guess that if you look uh, at your uh, internet 
and look for Bibles, you will see one or more, no? and it will be free for you. So therefore, we can say that so many copies of the Bible have been read already by so many people as of today. Now, ang question, ito ba ang dahilan? Kaya the Bible is said to be the greatest story ever told dahil napakadaming nagbabasa nito. Ito kaya? But yeah, oo, pwede nga siguro. But for me, uh, brothers and sisters, I would like to think no, na the Bible is the greatest story ever told because it is the greatest love story ever told. Ito ang pinaka uh, malaking love story that you have ever heard. No, For us, uh, I don't know if any one of you is uh, old enough na naabutan nyo yung the movie na Love Story. No? Naging sikat din na pelikula yon. Ako, naabutan ko yun po. No? Uh, napanood ko na rin yun, no? nung unang napalabas yun. And uh, napakasikat yun. Ang dami rin nanonood. No? But if that was so popular then, brothers and sisters, so more is the Bible. Why? Because it is the greatest love story ever told. Bakit? Why is it the greatest love story ever told? Alam niyo po, sa John chapter 3, verse 16, ang sinasabi po, for God, alam niyo lang lahat to, no? lalo na yung mga katekista, I'm sure you've heard this so many times before, but I would like to emphasize it today. No, uh, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. But might have eternal life. For God so loved the world. So why do we say that the Bible is the greatest love story of all? Because the Bible is the love story between God and man. God and man from start to finish it is the love story between god and man and this particular phrase this particular quote in the bible of uh, john chapter 3 verse 16 a very popular line proves it no that it is god's love that is contained in the whole bible and this is the reason uh, why we say na naalala ko tuloy eh, brothers and sisters when i was studying uh, um, scriptures no, one of my professors asked me, uh, Brother D, nabasa mo na ba yung Bible? Eh, required kami eh, na magbasa ng Bible from beginning to end. Eh. And sabi ko, opo, eh, tinanong niya ako, okay, then please tell me what the Bible is in one sentence. Anybody of you know how, what the Bible is in one sentence? What is the summary of the Bible in one sentence? So, uh, sinwerte naman po ako, no? Uh, na, 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 ang sagot ko sa kanya, alam mo, Father, sabi kong gano'n sa professor ko, uh, the whole Bible is the story of our salvation. So, from page one to the last page before the co end cover of the Bible, it is the story of our salvation. Yun lang ang, tapos na ang ating Bible. Pag, naantindihan, pag naunawaan natin that it is the story of our salvation. So alis na tayo. Tapos na tayo. No? <laughs> Tama ba yun? <laughs> uh, hindi pala. Uh, titignan ngayon natin kung bakit. No? Why is it the story of our salvation? Okay. Uh, ang sabi po ni St. Augustine. Kailangan nyo si St. Augustine. Ano? Uh, siya yung, ano, yung bago siya na convert, eh, matanda na. No? But he became one of the doctors of the church, no? And sabi niya, this is what he said. To fall in love with God is the greatest romance. Sabi niya, and to seek him is the greatest adventure. But even more than the greatest romance and the greatest adventure, and sabi niya, if you find him, when you find him, this is the greatest human achievement. So brothers and sisters, yan ang nice nating gawin. 
dito sa ating study of the Bible timeline. No, yan ang nais nating gawin dito, no? We want to fall in love with God. Why? Because it's the greatest romance. We want to seek him. Hanapin natin siya, no? Sa saan? Sa scripture, no? Why? Because it is the greatest adventure. And napakalaking gantimpala, no? Pag ito ay nahanap natin, pag siya ay ating nahanap dito sa ating kurso na ito, no? Because it will be our greatest human achievement. And so, let us talk about the course objectives. Ano ba ang objectives ng ating a study of the Bible timeline course? Tatlo ang ating objectives. Tandaan niyo po itong ating objectives. Ano? Kasi at the end of the course, we will all ask ourselves, ito bang objectives natin and na-achieve natin? Nagawa ba natin no? at the end of the course? So, what are the objectives? Una, it is to discover to become familiar with the new things and old things in sacred scripture in the bible no of course marami nagsasabi diyan nabasa ko na ang bible from cover to cover no uh, at wala nang bago kasi nabasa ko na lahat yan syempre marunong naman lahat tayong magbasa no lalo na tayong nandito no pero ang question eh merong ba tayong na diskubre sa pagbasa natin meron ba tayong Naunawaan ba natin in the first place yung ating mga nabasa? So, part of our objectives is to understand what we are reading. No? Hindi lang basahin, but to understand. And our third objective is to have our learnings, to share our learnings and discoveries with other people. Dapat, kung pakatapos nito ating kinukuhang a study of the Bible timeline, ito ay talagang lo- na na gawa natin ang ating course objectives, tunay nga na na-achieve natin ito, we should be ready to share this with other people. Why? Because that's what the Lord told us. Di ba? Love God and love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you want to share what you have with them. No? Why? Because loving the neighbor is the same as loving God. Okay? So, ano pa? No? Uh, our course seeks to build us up. Palaguin tayo sana nitong ating kurso. How? By obtaining a deeper understanding through this study. No, Alam ko nabasa nyo na. Pero kailan natin ng mas malalim na pagkakaunawa. No? And two, by returning home with what we have obtained and as we return home, we enhance our lives, what we have by what we have obtained. No, kung ano man yung ating nakuha, ay gamitin natin sa ating mga buhay. Ngayon, ang question, what is our outline and methodology? Paano natin isasagawa itong ating Bible Timeline Course? Uh, hindi po ito mag-iiba doon sa, I'm sure you've heard about the Bible Timeline already before. No, um, This is a, uh, a type of uh, dividing the Bible that uh, was made popular by Jeff Cavins, no? isang theologian, uh, the former Protestant na naging Katoliko, nagturo ng Biblia. No? And uh, this, his course is a very popular course, The Great Adventure. Ewan kung narinig niyo na yung Great Adventure. No? And uh, hinati niya po, gagamitin natin, hindi natin uulitin yung course niya dahil uh, uh, plagiarism na yon pag ginawa natin yun. Um, kundi ang gagawin po natin ay gagamitin lang po natin yung Bible periods na pinasikat niya. No? So what are these Bible periods? It, this will also be the outline of our course. So there are 12 Bible periods. And ito po yung the early world, which covers Genesis chapters 1 to 11. The patriarchs, which covers Genesis from chapter 12 to 50. Uh, Egypt and the Exodus, which covers the book of the Exodus. Desert Wanderings, which covers the book of Numbers. Uh, Conquest and Judges, which covers the book of Joshua and Judges. The Royal Kingdom, no? uh, First and Second Samuel, at ki- First Kings. This will go towards the divided kingdom. No? Dalawang ano to? Dalawang periods. Royal Kingdom and divided kingdom. Magkasunod yung dalawang yon. And then, susundan ng two kings, which covers the exile. No? And then we will have 
the period of the return, which is covered through the book of Ezra the, and book of Nehemiah. And then we will have the, Maccabee, the period of the Maccabean revolt. And napakahalaga po nitong period na ito. No, why? Because this is not present in the Protestant Bible. Wala po ito. Tayo lang ang meron nito, the Maccabean revolt, which is we will study through the first book of Maccabees. No? At we will have messianic fulfillment, which is the Gospels, pagdating na po ng ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. No? But here it says that we will, it will only cover Luke. Yes, yun ang main natin babasahin, but we will try to cover, no? in, in this course, we will try to cover the four Gospels. No? Uh, hindi naman natin, siyempre, napaka-ikse, no? ng ating, uh, ano, but we will try to have an overview, kahit an overview man lamang, ng apat na Gospels. Kasi, Mahirap pag isa lang kinuha natin sapagkat uh, baka mislead tayo. There's a reason why there are four Gospels. No? And of course, the last period of the church is our period today, which is the period of the church. Okay? So yan ang ating outline ng ating uh, uh, time, timeline course, no? Bible timeline study. And uh, how will we do it? What is our methodology? Our study of scriptures, <clears throat> the methodology that we will use in our study of scriptures will be the narrative timeline approach. Anong ibig po sabihin nito? No? Narrative timeline approach is um, may mga books kasi ab, ab, ng Biblia kaya nahihirapan ko minsan tayo basahin ang Biblia. Kasi may mga aklat ang Biblia na hindi narrative ang ang kanyang pagkakasulat may poems no may laws merong iba-ibang klase no pero uh, ang gusto po natin eh na ma, na malaman ay hindi naman yung totality kundi yung what is the story of our salvation yan ang ating objective what is the story of our salvation or ang ang sabi nga natin ngayon ang ang tina-target natin ang tema no na ta-target natin is salvation history So doon natin itututok. Para makita natin yon, we will use the timeline approach, the narrative timeline approach. Using the timeline, the periods, the 12 periods of the Bible, and using a narrative approach. Ang kukunin po natin para maunawaan natin ang storya ay yung mga narrative books of the Bible. Pero you may read the non-narrative books as a complement, complement of the narrative books. Para ano, uh, extra reading extra mile para sa atin no uh, and then we will seek to have a clearer unified understanding of the story presented in the holy bible which is the word of god ano ibig sabihin nun? clearer unified understanding marami pong nagsasabi ay ang babasahin ko lang ay new testament wala na akong pakialam dun sa old testament bakit eh Story ng mga Hudyo yun eh. Hindi tayo kasali doon. Dito lang tayo sa ano, sa New Testament. Sabi nung iba. No? Uh, tama ba yun? We should realize that the Bible, that the Old Testament and the New Testament is there because there is a purpose for its existence together. The whole Bible, the story of the Bible is one together with the Old and the New Testament. Titignan po natin later on yun. No? And we, what we are studying is really the Word of God. No? And uh, we will seek also a deeper understanding of the Old and New Testaments in the Catholic Bible. Kaya ang simula natin ay nasa Genesis. Yung ating next, next session, eh, Genesis. Magsisimula tayo doon and we will move on forward towards the other periods of the Bible. Okay. And so, let us ask ourselves, what must we do with the Word of God in our life? Sabi natin, the Bible is the Word of God. Di ba po? Uh, so, eh, bakit natin gusto malaman what the Bible is saying? Why do we want to know the message of the Bible? Why do we want to know to be able to better understand what the Bible is saying. So, bakit ba? Anong tulong nito sa ating buhay? Anong pwede natin gawin dito? 
So, what do we do with the Word of God in our lives? First, as sabi nila, we must hear the Word of God and we must listen to it. Ano kay bahan nun? Hear and listen. Hear, narinig natin. Binasa, narinig natin. Mamo, yung narinig natin sa uh, liturgy of the Word. Pag, uh, it is that the Word is being proclaimed. Narinig nyo yun, di ba? Pero, do you listen to it? Yun ang next question. If you hear the Word of God, do you listen to it? Ibig sabihin, naintindihan nyo ba? Na, in, in, sinusunod nyo ba? May kaibahan yun eh, hindi ba? Uh, hear, I can hear sounds. I can hear noise. no? But when I say listen, hindi ba pag sinasabi nyo sa mga anak nyo, Totoy, pakinggan mo ko. Ito ang sinasabi ko sa iyo. Sumunod ka sa akin. Listen to me. Yon. Yan ang kaibahan ng hearing and listen. No? He- listening is really doing what it says. no? And then we must read and understand the Word of God. The Bible is the written Word of God. And ito ay dapat nating basahin. Ngunit, mara- sabi ko nga kanina, maraming nagsasabi, ay nabasa ko na yan. From page 1 to the last page, nabasa ko na yan. Ang next question ko, naunawaan nyo ba? No? So, you must also understand. Three, we must ponder and pray the Word of God. Ponder. Ano yung ponder? Yung ginagawa po ni Mama Mary, no? di ba? Pag, pag meron siyang sinabi sa kanya ang Panginoon, ang Diyos, she keeps it in her heart and ponders it there. No? Ine-meditate niya yon At dinadasalan din niya. No? When we pray, we are actually responding to what God has told us through His Word. No? And ang final thing that we should do with the Word is to live it out. No? Isa buhay natin. We live it out in our lives. Sa buhay natin. Pag hindi natin ginawa yun, then useless yung ating pagdinig at pagbabasa at pagdasal ng Biblia if we had not applied it to our lives. And so, what must we do with the Word of God? Uh, let me just read to you a statement just made recently by Bishop Sofronio Aguirre Bangkud. Sino si Bishop Bangkud? Siya po yung president ng Biblical Apostolate Commission of the CBCP. Itong present uh, ano, present Biblical Apostolate Commission of the CBCP at nung just this this year, last January 24, during the Bible uh, month, no? Um sinabi niya that he is inviting the Filipinos to commit themselves as a people to read, study, pray, live, share, and celebrate the Word of God. Why? Because it will open their hearts to such a power. No? A transforming power. It will transform our lives. No? So nakit sinabi niya, napakahalaga to read, study, pray, live, share, and celebrate the Word of God because it will transform our lives. The Bible is so powerful you know, that it can transform our lives. And where can we find the Word of God? Saan natin makikita ang salita ng Diyos? Saan natin, where can we find it? You know? So, through the channels, Uh, ito, kabisado-kabisado ng mga katekista na no. But I know not all of you are katekist here. Um, I, I was uh, sinabi sa akin that this is a mixed audience. But we have katekist in our midst. No? So they've heard of this. No? Where can we find the Word of God? Of course, through that transmission of channels of transmission of the Word of God. And what do we call this? The depositum fidei or the deposit of faith, which is living sacred tradition of the church the sacred and the sacred scripture or the holy bible and of course these two are taught and interpreted to us by who the magisterium no? the teaching authority of the church no? so doon natin makikita ang salita ng Diyos no sa tradition sa scriptures at doon sa mga pag uh, explain sa atin ng magisterium yung mga Vatican mga Vatican documents no na, na nababasa natin explaining the, the the 
the word of God. Mga sinusulat ng ating mga papa. No? Marami yan. No? So we can find the word of God there. No? And um, just to give you an idea of how the word of God is transmitted to us, let me just show you this uh, ano tawag dito? This uh, diagram. No? This diagram. No? Yung sa taas, may kita natin ang Diyos, no? the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they have they have come to us through divine revelation. Sila rin ang nagpahayag sa atin. No? And how did they do this? They did this in the Old Testament through Jewish tradition. Right? Yung mga, mga kwento nung mga patriarchs, no? ng mga uh, people in the Old Testament. And it was written down in the Old Testament. In the New Testament naman, it is given to us in apostolic tradition. No? Through Jesus Christ. Why? Jesus Christ is the final and the complete word of God. Sabi natin. And the historical Jesus is the one who brought the word of God to his disciples. No? So that's why it is alive through apostolic tradition. But then eventually it was written down in the New Testament. And so that the Old and the New Testament is what comprises sacred scripture and public revelation. Yung tinatawag natin na public revelation. No, uh, nagkakatikisim na ako. Pero sanit lang nakita natin yung, ano, yung uh, flow no, kung paano natin na, paano napunta sa atin yung word of God. So therefore, the Bible, which is sacred scripture, is part of public revelation as a, together with sacred tradition. No? And it is explained to us by the magisterium. Yan siya sabi natin kanina. No? Okay, so with that, let me now go to this uh, part. No? Let me ask you. Do you have a Bible, at least one Bible, in your homes? Lahat ba kayo ay may Biblia sa inyong mga Bahay. No? Pangalawa, natanong ko. Do all of you, aside from the what you have, the Bible that you have in your home, syempre yung mga Biblia yung nasa bahay nyo ay open to your, the whole family, no? yung mga anak, yung mga kapatid, yung mga magulang. Um, but another question that I'd like to ask. Uh, do you have a personal Bible? Do you have a personal Bible? Isang Bible na sa inyo na doon kayo nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Na hindi ito yung pinapakilaman ng inyong parents, ng inyong kapatid, ng inyong anak. Hindi po, no? Kundi sa inyo lang. No? Um, next question. Is it a Catholic Bible? Is it a Catholic Bible? How will you know if it is a Catholic Bible? At yatang alam ko po na marami sa inyo alam nyo na ito. No? Pero... Uh, sinusiguro ko lang na alam natin kasi meron akong um, the reason behind this meron akong nagturo din ako ng, ano, ng ganito ng Bible timeline one time ano? um, marami na kasi akong mga runs of the Bible timeline na, na, na itinuro and one of my students came to me no, one of the people no, yung learners natin dun sa Bible time came to me saying Brother Dick but hindi ko mahanap dito yung sinasabi nyo tinignan ko yung Biblia niya hindi pala katoliko Hinahanap niya yung Maccabees. Kasi isa sa mga periods of the Bible, Maccabees. Wala daw doon sa Biblia niya. Sabi ko, patingin nga, eh kasi hindi naman Catholic Bible yung EUA. <laughs> no? So, let me just go through this. Even if you already know what it is. No? Uh, for, for the benefit of those na lilina, para mas, mas malinaw lang at mas sigurado. No? So, uh, first, let me advise you that as we go through this course, please get your own personal Bible. Yun muna. Please get your own. Huwag yung Bible ng pamilya, kundi your own personal. If you really want to have a better understanding of the Bible, you have to have your own personal Bible. Bakit? Kasi pag binabasa ng pamilya, nahihiya tayong dumihan yung Bible. Ay, baka mabaluktot yung page. Ay, baka madumumi 
But do you know, brothers and sisters, that the best Bible is a dirty Bible? Mm-hmm. No? Yung ina-underline nyo, yung hina-highlight nyo, yung may mga nota sa tabi na, Uy, this is important, I have to remember this. Yung mga may ganun. No? Yun ang, yun ang pinakamagandang Bible. No? Yun din ang pinakagusto ng Panginoon na Bible. Ibig sabihin, talagang na uunawaan nyo yung kanyang salita. No? So how will I recognize? So as you get your own personal Bible, let me go on. How will I recognize a Catholic Bible? Okay. The Catholic Bible has... 73 books 46 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament Pag hindi po 73 hindi po katoliko yun Most of the Protestant Bibles have only 39 books in the Old Testament Most of them but not all some have less No some have less uh, but kung yun ay 46 katoliko po yun no? Ano pa ang tanda? Silipin nyo po. Buksan nyo po yung Bible. Nasaan ba yung Bible natin? Buksan nyo po yung Bible. Buksan nyo. Silipin nyo yung title page ng Bible. At i- ano nyo? Balik ka rin nyo. Doon sa likod ng title page, yung nakalagay doon eh, yung eto, 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 yung title page na tiyatawag. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Buksan nyo. At sa likod nun, ito, ito. Ay makikita kayo ng Nihil Obstat at saka Imprimatur. Imprimatur. Oh. Kung merong Nihil Obstat at meron itong Imprimatur, then you may rest assured that it is a Catholic Bible. Okay, anong ibig sabihin ng Nihil of Stat? No? Uh, teka, medyo nakabara ko. Ayan, medyo malitli na ako. <laughs> uh, ang Nihil of Stat po ay itong nakikita nyo dito. No? Ito po, yung naka-encircle. Yan ang Nihil of Stat. No? At tinan nyo kung yung Bible nyo ay may ganun din. Ano? Anong ibig sabihin? Nihil of Stat is the attestation by a church censor that the book contains nothing that is contrary to faith or morals. It is all according to the doctrine of the church. Nothing stands in the way or walang hahad lang. No? And who does this? Who does the study? It's the censor liborum or the censor deputatus. Dalawa yun, no? Censor liborum or censor deputatus. Siya yung dinedelegate ng bishop to review the book in question. So that is what you call a nihil obstat. Ano naman po ang imprimatur? No? Ang imprimatur naman po ay ito, yung naka-encircle. Ito, no? sa, si, dito sa ating screen, yung nakatutok ay si Bishop Ramon C. Arguelles. Ar- at that time, Archbishop of Lipa. Noong um, November 28, 2005. No? Okay. Imprimatur niya. No, pinirmahan ito ni Bishop Arguelles. Ano ibig sabihin ng imprimatur? Let it be printed. So, yun ang ibig sabihin. Maari na pong i-imprenta. Kasi na-review na ni, uh, ni Father Felix Topo. No? Uh, Bishop pala itong nag-review dito. Si Bishop Felix Topo. No? Uh, and therefore, the approval was given by the bishop of the author, kung sino man, kung ito ay hindi, kung ito ay hindi Biblia, kung ito ay religious book na merong uh, approval ng bishop, kung sino yung bishop nung sumulat, siya yung mag uh, imprimatur Or the bishop of the place where it will be published. Yun ang magbibigay ng imprimatur. No? Okay, so yan ang hanapin nyo. Meron bang nihil, obstat, at meron bang imprimatur. So kung meron yan, at uh, there are 46 books 12, uh, 46 books in your Old Testament and 27 books in your New Testament for a total of 73 books then it is a Catholic Bible yay <laughs> no? yung, yung, 
Tinanong niyo yung mga hawak, Catholic Bible ba yung mga hawak niyo? Kasi marami po. Bakit ko po tinatanong ito? Kasi marami pong klase ng Biblia. Pag pumunta kayo sa bookstore, lalo maswerte kung doon kayo bibili do sa 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 tindahan ng parokya. Kasi sigurado Katoliko. No, eh pag pumunta kayo sa National Bookstore. Paano yung malalaman kung Katoliko na yung binibili niyo o hindi? No, why am I telling you this? Because there are many types of Bible. And when choosing your personal Bible, you must take into consideration also what type of Bible it is. Yung bagay sa inyo. Hindi kasi lahat ng Biblia eh bagay sa iyo. May mga Biblia na babagay lang sa iyo. Depende sa iyong mood. Depende sa iyong character. Depende sa personality mo. No? Uh, so let me give you a a uh, description of available Bibles um, and describe it to you para malaman nyo kung ano ba yung dapat maging personal Bible ko. No? Yung, yung tanong nyo sa sarili nyo. Okay. So, ang pinaka-popular yan, ang American course, Bible. Is the New American Bible Revised. No? Meron ng, may New American Bible, yung NAB. Pero mang bago nun, may mas bago pa doon, NABRE. No? Yung revised na. Uh, so, the New American Bible Revised Uh, revised was translated directly from the source no doon sa mismong source the aramaic the hebrew and the greek writings why the old testament was written either in aramaic or hebrew while the new testament was written in greek so pag sinabi it is translated directly from aramaic hebrew and greek ibig sabihin doon sa yung yung hindi sila kumopya doon sa isang translation lamang kundi they went back to the original uh, writings. Doon nila translate. So, ganun ang itong New American Bible. Doon nila translate. It is dignified but not stiff. Anong ibig sabihin ng dignified? Um, medyo formal, pero hindi naman formal na formal. No? Uh, one of the versions, it is one of the versions of the Bible that is easily understood. No? And the New American Bible is really perfect also for everyday use. Ang katunayan nito, yung ating ginagamit na scripture, quotations, yung mga quotations natin na ginagamit sa misa at sa lahat ng liturgy natin dito sa Pilipinas, no? sa Catholic Church of the Philippines, ay hinango sa New American Bible. So gusto nyo, kung gusto nyo na eksakto yung words, pareho nung hamon, nagsisimba kayo yung may nagba, binabasa yung, yung first reading, second reading, at yung gospel reading. Gusto nyo kung ano yung sinasabi doon, eksakto doon sa binabasa yung Biblia, then you should use the New American Bible Revised. Eksakto yun. Dahil yon ang ginagamit ng ating Catholic Church in the Philippines. No? Okay. So ano pa ang ibang Bible? Yung tinatawag natin na Duay Reigns. Yung Latin Vulgate. Yan, yan. Latin Vulgate. Ano? Ang Duay Reigns version ay kinuha sa Latin Vulgate Bible meaning it was not translated directly from the from the Aramaic from the Hebrew from the Greek uh, writings but it was taken from the Latin Vulgate Bible no uh, yung sinurat ni Saint Jerome at translate nila with certain corrections made by Bishop Shaloner in the 4th century no and this became known as the Douay Reims Bible It is considered the most beautiful and accurate English translation of the Bible. No, why? Eh kasi ito diretso dun sa translate ni St. Uh, Jerome. Jerome. No? Kaya lang may problema. Kung paano yung pag-translate ni St. Jerome, meron din pinipresent. Kaya lang in English. So ito yung mga may thou, thy, uh-huh. yung mga ganun-ganun. Uh-huh. No? So, uh, the It, it is um, it is the rich tradition of the uh, if you want to have a rich tradition of the Bible then it is the Douay Reims it is ideal for Catholics who enjoy history because nga nung araw ganun yung ganun yung mga dasal hindi uh, so if you wish that then you have this is the Bible for you classical ang tawag dito classical writing pero kung ayaw nyo ng mga daw, therefore, ano yun, yung mga ganun-ganun, eh, mahirap ito. No? You, have, you cannot use this. No? 
So, ano dapat yung ano pa mga ibang Bible? Okay, let's go to the next one. Yung tinatawag na Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Makikita nyo ito. Meron ito sa national. No? It is also called the Ignatius Bible. Uh, and this was completed in 1966. No? Uh, it, yung archaic language, yung, yung mga lumang lengguahe was replaced with modern words and included some revisions that was also requested by Vatican. So ito yung rinibu na rin ng Vatican. The modern language and the informatory commentary notes, may commentary notes ito, make it also popular. No? Dahil mas, since it was completed in 1966, medyo modern. No? So isa sa mga gusto rin ng mga tao ito. And then we have the Jerusalem Bible. Ang sabi nung, nung editor ng, ng New Jerusalem Bible, sabi, sinulat niya mismo, despite the claims to the contrary, it is clear that the Jerusalem Bible was translated from French. Okay, so hindi pala ito translate diretso from the original sources. Hindi ito translate mula dun sa... Uh, Aramaic, Hebrew, at Greek. This was translated from French, from the French translation, with possibly some occasional looks into the original versions, yung Hebrew and Greek, rather than vice versa. What do you mean? Rather than it is a complete translation from the Hebrew and Greek, hindi po. It is a complete translation from the French version na medyo sinisilip-silip nila kung tama ba yung sinasabi sinisilip nila doon sa original Hebrew and Greek. So, because of that, it was written with an elegant French flavor. <laughs> no? Frenzois. <laughs> no? Para kang kumakain ng, ng French food. <laughs> no? uh, ang ano nito, ang, uh, ang New Jerusalem Bible. So, kung mahilig ka sa ganun, this is what the Bible for you is. No? Okay. Then you have the Good News Bible. Catholic edition. Remember, may good news Bible po na hindi Catholic edition. No? So, hindi ka mo good news Bible, Catholic na. Silipin niyo ulit yung 73 books at saka yung ano, ni Hill of Stat and yung na Hindi ka mo good news, Catholic. Hindi lahat ng good news Bible, Catholic. So, the good news Bible, Catholic edition is for those whose grasp of English is limited. Yung hindi masyadong magaling umingles. No? such as the children, o kaya yung mga non-English speaking Catholics. No, yung mga hindi sanay sa English, mga gusto nila mas sanay sila sa sa ibang lenguwahe kaya ng ng mga foreign languages o kaya uh, Tagalog mas gusto nila, no? Eh gusto mo English na version. So ito mas ma, ang mga English na words na ginagamit nila mas mas madaling intindihin. So, uh, this Bible uses a very small vocabulary. And it uses paraphrasing. Hindi yung exactong nakasulat dun sa pinanggalingan, yun ang isusulat nila. Medyo papalitan nila ng konti, pareho nila ng meaning para ma- madaling maunawaan. Para mas madaling maunawaan. Okay? Yun ang good news, Bible. And we have the New International Version, Catholic Edition. Ano yung New International Version, Catholic Edition? This is a spin-off from the good news, Bible. Doon din nanggaling, doon sinunod. But then it is less colloquial than the Good News Bible. Ibig sabihin, yung Good News Bible, maraming mga words na very common words na ipinalit doon sa... Kasi kung minsan, pag tinatranslate mo yung, yung original, hindi mo makuha yung exact, yung exact meaning pag pinalitan mo yung word. Kaya yung kaso, sa Good News, para maunawaan ng mga mas hindi masyadong marunong mintindi, eh sinisimplify nila yung word. Kung minsan nawawala yung yung ano, nawawala yung yung the real meaning of it. No. Naunawaan mo nga yung kwento pero nawala yung yung why, bakit. No. Uh, so uh, itong NIV, it was published to meet a need for a modern for a more modern translation. Medyo simple pero medyo mas complicated ng konti kaysa sa good news. It was done by Bible scholars using the highest quality manuscripts available. So may mga references silang mga ginamit, hindi original. Ano? And of importance is that the Bible be expressed broadly in a broadly understood modern English. Ang English nilang ginamit, yung kayang intindihin 
ng marami. Basta marunong mag-ingles. No? Yun, ang, yun ang kaibahan nito. Of course, let me tell you that there are also uh, what you call Tagalog versions and translations. But uh, alam nyo, I, I, I often look at the uh, Tagalog uh, translations of the Bagon. Lalo na yung mga makikita nyo sa National Bookstore. You have to be very careful in looking at the Tagalog versions because most of them are Protestant. Bihira yung Tagalog version na Catholic. So, palagi nyo titingnan yung ating basis. Is it Catholic or not? Dapat tinitingnan nyo pag kayo ay naghahanap ng Tagalog version ng Bible. Good news. Meron ba yung good news Bible na? Yan marami na Tagalog. Good news Bible. Pero tinan nyo na Catholic edition. Okay. Ano yung ano pang technique para kung ta- malaman yung Catholic edition? Yung meron pong naka-cross na nakalagay dun sa cover. Usually ang Catholic edition may cross na nakalagay dun sa, sa, sa kanyang uh, cover. Ibang example ko. Wala. Tingnan ko may example ako eh. Kung wala dito, nasa, nasa, nasa labas yung aking uh, Tagalog uh, version. No? Uh, so, siguraduhin lang nyo po na it is a Catholic version. Uh, meron yung Community Bible na Tagalog. Napakaganda ng translation nila. Uh, uh, yun, yun ang ginagamit kong Tagalog uh, version. No? Yung Community Bible. Pero siguraduhin nyo nga na Katoliko. Okay, so with that, let's. Uh, we are through with the first um, part of this. Um, so let me just um, go back, no, to our uh, uh, gallery view, no. Bago tayo magsimula, I'm sure lahat kayo ay uh, papagod na. Let's have a five-minute break. No? Let's have a five-minute break. Uh, yung mga gusto magpunta ng CR, gusto minum ng kape, gusto minum ng tubig. Gustong mata ng mani, uh, you can do that now. I'll give you five minutes. Meron po tayong timer dito. Ipe-play ko yung timer para alam nyo kung kailan kayo babalik. No? Uh, let me play my timer. Salamat Panginoon sa iyong punya Misyon kanugob sa aming puso Aming sarili ay aming handog Laging tapat at laging tukon Nalirito handa kami sa 
aming sarili ay aming handog Laging tapat at laging tukon Naririto handa kami Panginoon Naririto handa kami Nagising ba ho kayo? The sap ito. <laughs> okay, so sana na were you able to take your bathroom breaks, yung inyong mga gustong nagkape, kung gusto minuman tubig. Uh, so, okay na naman tayo. Pwede na naman tayo magano. Uh, refresh na naman tayo mga kapatid. No? So, let's continue. no? So, um, let us continue with the second part of this uh, ano uh, our uh, introduction puro mga technical yung ating pinag-usapan nung una ngayon we will now talk about uh, reading no reading the bible uh, nakapili na tayo nakapili na tayo na ating nais na biblia sabi ko nga sa inyo uh, please make sure no na you have your own personal bible kung talaga you want to have a deeper relationship with god a deeper understanding of the Bible, get your own personal Bible. Uh, of course, importante pa rin yung Biblia na para sa pamilya. No? Kasi ito, lahat, ang, lahat yung buong pamilya may access dito. Pero ito, ito sa inyo lang. No? Mas maganda. Uh, para nasusulatan nyo. Huwag kayong mata... Meron ako nakita minsan, no? Uh, uh, Nungapit sa akin, Brother Dick, ang ganda ng Biblia ko. Ito po, bagong-bago, bagong-bago. Akala niya, napakaganda yung bagong-bago. Nung tinignan ko, wow, walang kadumi-dumi. Sabi ko, binubuksan mo ba ito? <laughs> uh, uh, ang sabi nga, ano eh, di ba? Uh, how do you know that, ito, ito, ano, uh, addition lang to sa ating lecture. How do you know if a Bible is a Catholic Bible? Uh, Yung joke dito, alam niyo. <laughs> uh, pag daw maalikabok at malinis, malinis yung loob, yung labas ay puro alikabok, Catholic Bible yon pag yun daw Bible, eh, yung loob ay eh, gula-gulanit at mabaho, eh, ano raw yun? 
Protestant Bible. <laughs> Kasi ang Protestant, mahilig magdagaganon ng Bible. Eh. Tsaka ang palaging daladala na nasa ilalim ng kilikili. Yung, Bible, yung Katoliko daw, yung Bible nasa shelf. Kaya ma- maganda maganda yung loob. Pero yung labas, puro alikabo. <laughs> anyway, uh, so back to the... Uh, Back to our uh, ano, our introduction of the Bible, uh, a study of the Bible timeline. No, our session one, an introduction to reading and understanding the Bible. So, ngayon, ito na yung ating pag-usapan. Ano, uh, tapos na yung ating uh, physical description of the Bible. Let us now talk about what is inside the Bible. No. Uh, an overview of what is inside the Bible. So, ang sabi nila, ang sabi sa, ang sabi sa Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 29. Sabi ni God, It is not it is not my word like fire, says the Lord. Hindi ba parang apoy ang aking salita? Sabi ng Diyos. Anong parang apoy? Anong ibig sabihin nun? Parang apoy na kahit na nagsimula siya ng napakaliit, subukan nyo, magsindi kayo ng posporo, tapon nyo po sa mga dahon, patay po kayo, wala na kayo uwian na bahay. <laughs> uh, kasi lalaki po ang sunog. Lalaki na lalaki. Ganun ang word of God. It starts small in our hearts. But, kung ito ay, we will fan it, it will become a huge fire in our hearts no and sabi pa rin sa jeremiah that the word of god is like a hammer para daw martilyo na malaki that breaks the rock into pieces kaya niyang martilyuhin yung bato at yung bato ay mababasag ng mga maliliit na ibig sabihin it is so powerful no it is so powerful in fact it is one way to combat the devil. Alam nyo ba yon That the word of God is one way to fight the devil? Patatandaan nyo po ba nung si Jesus ay, ay nasa disyerto, makatapos siyang binyagan. Uh, hindi, hindi nyo pa pala nababasa yung Bible, sorry. <laughs> uh, for those who have, no? um, uh, nung pagkatapos binyagan si Jesus, dinala siya ng ng uh, banal ng ano ng Espiritu Santo sa sa disyerto at doon siya ay nag purification ng kanyang sarili no nag nag, nag fast no uh, for 40 days and 40 nights and doon dumating ang demonyo sa kanya at siya ay tinetempt ha ang pinanlaban ang pinanlaban siya sa listahan ang pinanlaban sa ang pinanlaban niya sa demonyo ay the word of god No, basahin niyo po yung part niyo. Nagkaroon ng 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 pagkakataon. Next, no. They say that the word of God is God's mirror, no? God's mirror, salamin daw ng Diyos, no? Ah, uh, in James, in, in the letter of James, chapter 1, it says, God's word shows us our true self. Pinapakita daw sa atin, parang salamin, para tayong nananalamin pag binabasa natin ang word of god para tayong nananalamin it shows us our true self no uh, we miss god's blessing when we forget who the word says we are kasi binibisto tayo ng word kung sino tayo talaga pag binasa mo ang word of god malalaman mo kung sino ka whether you like it or not whether you don't want to recognize it or not you will find out who you really are no uh, and You have to search the word of God to learn who you are. So, yan ang isa sa mga dapat niyong tingnan. No? As we go on with the word of God, tingnan niyo. Try to see where you are there. No? Uh, and finally, let me just uh, share with you yung sinabi ni St. Peter in his letter. No? Sabi ni St. Peter, We are like newborn babies who crave for pure spiritual milk. Pure spiritual milk. Yan ang, yan ang kanyang description sa salita ng Diyos. That the word of God is like pure spiritual milk, milk for us who are newborn babies. That we need it so much so that we can grow up in our salvation. 
ganun kahalaga yung salita ng Diyos para sa atin. Para, kasing kahalaga ng gatas ng ina sa sanggol na bagong anak. Pag wala yung gatas, ano mangyayari sa bata? No? Okay, so that is just to give you an idea what ano, how how important the word of God is to us. But uh, now let us go to the more um, uh, other parts, no? So we're talking about the Bible. The Bible is the written word of God. Ang salita ng Diyos ang nasusulat. Kasi the word of God, where can you find it? Di ba sabi natin kanina? You can also find it in sacred tradition and in magisterium. But the Bible is the written word of God. And it comes from the Greek word, Biblia. Which means not just a book, but books. Yung the word Biblia, if translated, it's a Greek word. If translated means books, plural. Hindi isa. Bakit, bakit plural? Kasi nga, there are 73 books in the Bible. So in effect, it's not just a book. It is a library. No? Uh, it is really a library. Pag, pag daw meron kang more than one book, may library ka na. Ilang bang books niya sa bahay? So kung meron pala kayong mga limang libro sa bahay, pwede mo nang tawag niyo na library. No? Uh, so that the Bible itself is a library. So it has what you call the Old Testament, which is about preparing the way or announcing what will happen in the New Testament. What does, so ito yung sagot dun sa mga nagsasabi, bakit po pa kailangang basahin ang Old Testament? Kasi it prepares the way and it announces what will happen in the New Testament. All the Old Testament covenants that God has made find their fulfillment and its full meaning and purpose in Jesus who is the new covenant. Okay, ito yung ano, pinag-uusapan na natin kanina, no? na iba ang Protestant Bible sa Catholic Bible. What is the difference? Sabi natin kanina, the Catholic Bible has 46 books in the Old Testament. But the, but the Protestant Bible has only 39. Ano yung wala? Ano yung wala sa Protestant Bible na meron sa Catholic Bible. Ito. The Book of Tobit. The, Book of Tobit. the first and second books of Maccabees. The Book of Wisdom. The Book of Sirach. And the Book of Baruch. Wala po ito sa, ano, sa, sa Protestant Bible. Plus, there are some portions also. No? Samba dito. Ah, nasa next, ano. That are also not there, no. So pito ito, no. Nakita nyo, pito, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Pag pag gusto yung malaman kung Catholic Bible, dalapin yung any of this. Wala yan sa Protestant, no. Okay. So therefore, the old ca- ca- Testament canon of the Catholic Bible has 46 books. Ito in a circle ko. Ito ang wala sa Protestant, no. It has 46 books. What is a canon? Why, why do you say Old Testament canon? Canon is the official list, no? List ang ibig sabihin ng canon, no? It uh, kaya yung saint siya sabi mo canonized. Bakit siya sabi natin canonized yung saint? Kasi sinasama siya dun sa listahan ng mga santo, no? So canon is a list of the books of the Old Testament, no? So ito yung this is the Catholic Old Testament canon, na meron nung seven books plus a portion of Esther. And um, a portion of Esther na wala rin doon and Daniel. No? Uh, although may Daniel sa Protestant, may part na wala sa Protestant na meron sa Catholic. Sa Book of Esther din. Okay. Um, okay. And this is the complete canon of the Catholic Bible. The Old and the New Testament. Teka, alis ako dito. Tinatakpan ko yung Old Testament. Okay. Ayan. So you see that the Old Testament are composed of the Pentateuch, yung group na Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, wisdom books, books about wisdom, historical books, and books that are writings of the prophets. And the New Testament naman are composed of the Bible, the Gospels, the historical books, which is the Acts of the Apostles, the letters of Paul, the non-Pauline letters, the letters of the other Apostles, And of course, the apocalypse, revelations. No? 
Uh, so, yan. Ang Canon of the Catholic Bible. Okay. So, bakit natin kailangang basahin ang Old and New Testament? Because the New is in the Old concealed. It is hidden in the Old. The New is hidden in the Old. And in the New, the Old is revealed in the New Testament. Ito sabi ni St. Augustine. No? So, what will the Old Testament answer for us? Bakit sinasabi natin that the new is in the old? Because if we read the old, this it will answer these questions. Who will the Messiah be? Makikita natin sa old. Who will the Messiah be? What will the Messiah be like? What will he do? Into what family will he be born? Will the Messiah be a conqueror? What type of Messiah will he be? Will he be a man of peace or a man of war? Will he? How will we recognize him? How did the human condition get into this way? And is there still hope for man? Yan ang makikita natin sa Old Testament. A New Testament naman, what will it answer for us? It will answer these questions. What did the psalmist mean? Huh? Yung palang sagot sa psalm nandito sa New. No? Who, was the, who was Isaiah writing about? Will God reach out to help the non-Jews? Ito ba'y para sa Hudyo lamang, kagaya niya sabi natin sa, sa, sa Old Testament? What is the difference between God's grace covenant with Abraham and the law covenant given to Moses with the nation of Israel? What will the Creator do to fix the human condition? And do sa tanong natin dun sa Old Testament, is there still hope? May pag-asa pa ba sa tao? The New Testament answers that for us. Yes, there is hope for man. Okay, so why, ang tanong natin, why is the Holy Bible unique? Bakit kaiba? Bakit kakaiba ang Biblia? One is because it's a library of books, of 73 books. Also because it's the written word of God. It is God's word set into human writing. But it was inspired by God, even if it was written by man. No, Because they were guided by God using the human faculties of the writers. There is only one principle. There are many writers, but only one author, and that author is God. It has many forms, literary forms, made stories, poetry, epics, history, parables, letters, figurative language, legislation, law, ha? Pati, pati pala yung mga abogado, may law dito. Ha? Uh, legislation, tragedy, Wisdom literature, it has many themes. It has love, faithfulness, redemption. Marami. No? Uh, kaya many books. No? Uh, many literary forms. And many people forget that the Bible, like any other book, must be understood according to certain rules. Pag nagbabasa po tayo ng Bible, hindi isang, isang method only of reading and understanding the Bible. Akala nung iba, nabasa ko na ang Bible from page from cover to cover. But did you understand yung sasabi kong tanong ko? Kasi as you go from one book to the other, you may have to change your frame of mind. You may have to change your frame of mind. No? It's just like reading a newspaper, brothers and sisters. No? When you read the front page of a newspaper, yung headlines, it is written as it is. Ano siya sabi nun? Yun. Yun ang nangyari. Nasunog ang bahay ng mga tiga barrio kwekwe. No? Uh, yun ang nangyari. Si Juan ay nasa gasaan ng pison. Yun ang nangyari. News. But when you go to the editorial, news pa ba yun? Hindi. It already contains the feelings of the writer. Nandun na, whether siya ay kampi kay ganun o hindi. Di ba? When, when you go to the comics, totoo ba yon yung mga nakalagay doon? The comic page? O are those cartoons na ano lang? When you go to the entertainment page and you, it talks about the, the mga artista, mapapaniwalaan nyo ba yung 100% yung sinulat ng mga nagsusulat tungkol sa artista? So when you read the newspaper, iba-iba, depende kung nasa, anong binabasa nyo. 
Same with the Bible, brothers and sisters. No? Kaya nga, they were written in different ways. No? So there are certain rules. And these rules we are using every day when we read books like a news or even a newspaper. Kung ano yung ginagamit natin sa pagbasa ng dyaryo, ganun din ang Bible. As you go from one type of literature to another, you cannot apply the same rules. You have to understand it the way it was written. Okay. So as a book, sinasabi nila, as a book, the Bible must be interpreted sensibly using your head as a book. But <clears throat> as God's book, bilang aklat na that, that was inspired by God, it must be interpreted spiritually. Hindi lang gamit ang ating utak, kundi gamit ang ating puso at damdamin. Okay? So how do we read and understand the Bible correctly? First, tatanong natin sa sarili natin, what did the original writers intend to say? Ano ba nais sabihin ng mga nagsulat? No? Iba-iba yan. Ano? Kasi the writers come from different periods of time. No? Uh, the way St. Paul writes is not the way Isaiah or Jeremiah or yung sumulat ng, ng Genesis. It's not, the way, it's not the same way they want to uh, say what they want to say. Diba? Iba-iba. No? So what did the original writers intend to say? Hindi lang what I think they are they want to say, but what they are saying. Hindi ikaw, ha? Not what you think they are saying, but what they are actually saying. So, you have to consider many things. One, ano yung literary form? Poem ba ito? Narrative ba ito? History ba ito? Uh, ito ba ay uh, parable? Ito ba ay uh, word of wisdom? Proverbs? Spare the rod and spoil the child. No? Uh, anong, what, what is this? Ano yung form? Doon mo maintindihan. Literary style. Anong style nung nagsulat? Ito ba yung sinulat niya? For whom? For the Jews? For the non-Jews? No? Siya ba ay Hebrew? Hudyo ba siya yung sumulat? Or was he Greek? What language did he use? The Old Testament was written either in Aramaic or in Hebrew. The New Testament in Greek. When you sometimes we have to go back to the original language to see what the real meaning is. Maraming gano, no? lalo na sa gospel, maraming mga magkakamali tayo ng pag-interpretation kung hindi natin consider yung Greek translation nito, no? Culture. Iba ang kultura nung panahon ni Moses. Iba ang kultura nung panahon ng mga hari. Iba ang kultura nung panahon ni Jesus. Hindi pareho 'yon. Bakit si Jesus when he when he when he gives his parables, he talks about farmers. At saka bakit yung farmer noon naghahagis sila ng buto? Hindi sila nagkagaya ng ngayon na nag-aararo. Bakit noon ay hinahagis lang ang mga buto? No? Uh, history. Yung binabasa mo ba itong kung sa history? O oh, hindi siguradong history. Kwento lang. So, a very good way to understand what is written is to ask yourself, not how. Paano bang nangyari? Hindi yung not how. Kasi pag tinanong mo sarili mo, paano bang nangyari? E paano kung binabasa mo creation? Sabi sa creation, in six days, the world was created. Totoo ba yun? So, ask not how, but why. Bakit ito nangyari? Hindi, da, hindi papaano. Kasi pag sabi mo how, papaano. Eh, iba-iba tayo ng pagkaunawa, pag papaano, mag-aaway lahat. Doon ang pinag ng mga tao sa papaano. But when you ask why, why did it happen? Then you will have a unity in your understanding. Eh, ang sabi dito, the literary forms of the sacred scriptures refer to any of the various modes of writings which the people of any particular time and place are accustomed to use for expressions of their ideas. No? It is the form of expression which the author chooses to present his thoughts. So napaka-critical yung the way the author presents his thoughts. Yes, these are inspired by God. 
But it doesn't mean that God will tell the author how to write it. Ginagamit nga ng Diyos yung talents, yung mga talento ng mga nagsusulat upang ihayag ang kanyang mga salita. Pero God will not tell the author to. Ganito sabihin mo ha. Kailangan ang gamitin mong word ito. Kaya nga dapat meron tayong way of really understanding it because it was written by so many ad, so many writers. No? Hindi lang isa ang sumulat. Pero dun tayo hindi mag-aaway dun sa why. Bakit tayo hindi mag-aaway? Kasi yung why is what tells us that this is what God wanted to say. Okay. So, how do we read the Bible and understand it correctly? Ask not how. Ask why. Okay. Two, remember the context and unity of Scripture. Tandaan nyo that there is always context and unity. Huwag uh, kayong gagaya sa mga born again. No? Na kukuha na isang linya sa Biblia at yun ang kasabi nila. Ito ang ibig sabihin ng linya na ito. Hindi ko ganun. No? Uh, kung minsan nga siya sabi ko, mali yung ating ginagawa. No? What struck you? Meron tayong ganun style. Hindi ba po yung Bible sharing? What struck you? Tapos bibigyan natin ng meaning. Not what it really means, but yung ano sa kalooban natin ng meaning. Pero really, when you want to know what the real meaning of uh, the Word of God is, you look to read it in context. Ano yung sabi ng context? A line is related to a paragraph. A paragraph is related to a chapter. A chapter is related to a book. The book is related to the Old or the New Testament. And the Old Testament is related to the New Testament. That's how we should understand it. Not alone. Not isang linya. No? Ito nga yung palaging, uh, palaging pinag jojo kan din ng mga nagtuturo ng Bible. Meron daw lalaki na bigo sa pag-ibig. Nag-cut ng Bible. Nakita no? At nagbiti si Judas. Nagbiti rin siya. No? Uh, so, context. Ano ibig sabihin ng linya in relation to the paragraph? The paragraph in relation to the chapter? The chapter in relation to the book? The book in relation to the other books? of the Bible. No? Unity. Ano yung unity? Ang Bible is one. It is composed of 73 books, but none of those books, those 73 books, none of them will contradict any one of those 73 books. Not one. They are all in unity with each other. There will be nothing that you find in a part of the Bible that will contradict any other part of the Bible. You will know that it is true because there is no contradiction anywhere in those 73 books. And you will know. It's a trick din po sa ano, no? You, I don't know if some of you have learned in discernment, what is one way to do discernment? One way lang po, no? Is to see if it is congruent or hindi taliwas sa nakasulat sa salita ng Diyos. Kung ito ay taliwas sa nakasulat ng Diyos, na salita ng Diyos, then it's not from God. If, if, if it contradicts any part of the Bible. Okay, so the Bible has context. The Bible has unity. No? Uh, that means context and unity, tinan nyo ang mga covenants. No? Covenants of God with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David and Jesus, they are all related to each other. Even if they are in different testaments, in different books, these covenants are all related to each to one another. Okay, there is unity in God's plan for the world. Ang plano ng Diyos ay isa lamang. That's why when I said, how do we summarize the Bible? It is God's it is our story of salvation. Story of our salvation. Kasi there's only plan. The plan of God for our salvation is only one. Hindi marami. Kaya lang it unfolds. The story of God's plan of salvation unfolds from Genesis down to Revelation. It unfolds. But there's only one. Hindi dalawa, hindi tatlo, hindi apat. Only one plan for salvation is revealed in Scripture. So, 
we should also read the Bible in context with the living tradition of the church. Tradition. Bakit? Kasi sinabi nga natin kanina, hindi ba po? Word, the, re- the Bible is the written word of God. But sabi natin, it starts with divine revelation and then goes to tradition. Kagaya nun, yung mga turo ni Heso Kristo, nung nandito pa siya sa ating, uh, dito sa earth, no? hindi naman sinulat ka agad yun eh. The earliest writings of the of uh, was done in Kelan in 40 AD, 45 AD. And that was not even the gospel. That was a letter of Paul. The earliest gospel was written at around 65 AD. So what happened between the death of Jesus Christ and 65 AD? Everything was in tradition, word of mouth, passed on by apostolic tradition, meaning witnesses. No, yung mga apostoles mismo. What they saw and what they heard from Jesus, they transmitted no, uh, to uh, the disciples. Kaya bago sila nawala, sinulat yung it was written uh, in the Gospels. No? Okay, so living tradition of the church is in context always with the Bible. The liturgy is the home of the Bible. Liturgy. Ano po ba yung liturgy? It's worship in the church. Hindi ba po? Liturgy. Yung misa, yung mga dasal natin na, na sa, sa church, those are all liturgy. No? Uh, and they are the home of the Bible. Alam nyo ba, uh, brothers and sisters, look at the Mass. Liturgy, no? Liturgy of the Mass. Uh, Tinan natin yung Mass. Do you know that from the very beginning to the end, They are all scripture. Pansinin niyo po, no? Lahat ng sinasabi, from the beginning, from the sign of the cross, the beginning sign of the cross to the ending sign of the cross of the mass, tinan niyo, lahat po yun ay from scripture. All of it. Because liturgy is the home of the Bible. No? And say, sacred scripture You should read sacred scripture in context with the church tradition. Sinabi na natin yun kung bakit. Kasi tradition and the way to understand scripture is to is to understand tradition also. Bakit? Eh kasi galing sa tradition ang scripture. Yun ang pinanggalingan yan. No? We have to read Bible in harmony with the church teachings. Magisterium. Bakit? Eh kasi hindi ba nga a magisterium is the teaching authority of the church. Siya ang mag explain sa atin kung anong ibig sabihin ng salita ng Diyos. No? It cannot go in contra, it cannot contradict each other. So, those cannot contradict each other, therefore, you should read each book in the light of the others. Remember that the Old Testament only points to Jesus Christ. No, The Old Testament points only to Jesus Christ. Did you realize that, brothers and sisters? Hindi lang New Testament is the one that points to Jesus Christ. From Genesis, nakatutok na kay Kristo. Pag-uusapan natin yan, pagdating natin sa Genesis. No? Uh, five, remember the four senses of the scripture. Ano yung senses? Kung paano yung uunawain ng scripture. The four ways of understanding scripture. There are four. No, pinag-usapan na natin kanina yung una, yung literary sense. Yung ano yung sinasabi nung sumulat, paano anong mga anong style ng pagsulat, ano yun ang literary sense. No? But there are three spiritual center, senses to boot. Meron pang tatlong spiritual senses and this gives a deeper meaning beyond the literal meaning. No, ang sabi ng Pontifical Biblical Commission sa interpretation of the Bible. Uh, ito yung sa, galing sa Vatican. Ito sinabi nila. The meaning expressed by the biblical text when read, read under the influence of the Holy Spirit in the context of the Paschal mystery of Christ and of the new life which flows from it. It's the spiritual sense. Ito yun. It is the meaning expressed by the biblical text when read under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Si kailangan ng, ng ano, ng uh, guidance of the Holy Spirit in ton, in context with the Paschal mystery of Christ and the new life that flows from the Paschal mystery of Christ. 
yun ang spiritual sense. And what are this? Yung tinatawag na allegorical sense. Ito yung mga symbolisms po na nakikita natin sa Biblia. Di ba? There are many books in the Bible that presents symbolisms. No? While reading the Bible, we come across so many people, objects, events that have multiple meanings. Not as what it is written, kundi may mga meaning. Di ba? Pag sinabi mo, chosen people, may meaning yun. Di ba? Uh, pag sinabi, ano pa yung mga may meaning? Ito, example ng symbolism. Sa, sa, sa book of Samuel, my God, my rock, rock daw ang Diyos, bato. Symbolism lang yan, di ba? In whom I take my in whom I take refuge, my shield. Ay shield daw ang Diyos. No? So, symbolisms, no? Uh, ano pa? Yung ito, maraming nagtatanong. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng sinasabi ni Ezekiel? Dry bones. Dry bones. Ito yung mga buto. No, pag nagbabasa ka kay Ezekiel, A symbol, it is really a symbol of spiritual death. No? It's not really dry bones. Fire, ang daming ibig sabihin ng fire. Lalo na, lalo na uh, yung, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Lalo, lalo na sa Pentecost. Di ba? Tongues of fire. Marami pa ibig sabihin ng fire. The pillar of fire in the desert ng panahon ni Moses. No? Uh, tearing of garments and uh, symbol of anger and sorrow. Di ba? Nung sinabi ng kayo ay nagkasala, uh, paparusahan kayo ng Diyos, <laughs> nag-detour their garments uh, in, in repentance. Meron pa isang ganyan, anger. Nung sinabi ng high priest kay Jesus, Are you the son of God? It is you who said so. <clears throat> Pinilas ng high priest yung kanyang mga garments sa galit. Di ba? Blasphemy, sabi niyang gano'n. Oh, so maraming ibig sabihin, di ba? Um, when you read, you cannot just read, read literally. Okay? Merong moral sense na tinatawag. Ano yun? How it refers to our actions. Moral lessons that can be drawn from the biblical text. Palagi may moral lesson ng biblical text. Learning how we ought to live by paying careful attention to the text. Yan nagsasabi kung ano ba ang tama, anong mali. Lalo na sa mga letters. No? Yung uh, letters of St. Paul, letters of the apostles, marami doon na moral implications. No? Uh, ano pa? Anagogical sense. Anagogical. Ano yung anagogical sense? How it points to the afterlife. How it points to the end times. How it points to heaven. No? Yung ating uh, life after this. No? It looks to what is our goal of this life. Where do you want to go? We want to go back to our real home in heaven. So anything that refers to that is called anagogical. No? Anagogical. Okay. So ibig sabihin, ang pag-intindi pala sa Biblia ay hindi lamang literal. Okay, tinanggap ko na na itong ito ay hindi history kundi poem. Eh, pero pa pala ibang mga consideration. Pag poem, may symbolisms ba yung poem na yon? Merong reference ba sa moral doon? May reference ba sa anagogical uh, references? Yung mga tungkol sa, sa life to come. Meron ba siyang references to that? Pati pala yun, titingnan natin. So, hindi simple ang pagbabasa ng Biblia. Okay. Uh, sometimes we, yung ang balik ako doon sa sinasabi natin na sometimes we make the mistake no, of a uh, just reading the bible like a novel no sino yung mga nagbasa ng ano ng uh, yung mga mga makakapal na nobela no yung mga ano yun, war and peace ano pa ba yung mga makakapal uh, kahit na binasa niyo yon mas madaling intindihin yon kaysa intindihin ang biblia kasi hindi basta ganyan ganyan lang hindi lang basta binasa mo at hindi na yon hindi uh, hindi It is not uh, hindi ayon sa iyong pakiramdam. Ang ibig sabihin ng Biblia, sometimes we say, what is it that struck me? Why did it strike me? Kasi I passed through this uh, experience in life that it looks like this is what the Bible is writing about, is saying, saying to me. Hindi po, kung titignan mo yung totoong message ng Bible, it's not about you. It's about what the Bible is really telling you. 
What is the Bible telling you? It's not what you want it to tell you. Okay, let's listen to this. Let's listen to this short video, no? Uh, of uh, uh, kilala nyo ba to? Si Bishop Robert Baron, no? Uh, he talks about why is the Bible often deeply misunderstood. No, I will uh, share with you this short video. Hey. Okay. And okay, so uh just uh watch uh watch this short video, make sure lento. Friends, here's the second one, and I see it almost every day on these forums. Deep misunderstanding about the Bible. Now, I, how many saw the uh, Bill Maher movie, Religious? Did you see that? No, I'm glad, actually. <laughs> I went to see it. I was given an advance uh, ticket. They didn't, I, I didn't put my Roman collar on. I kind of snuck into this theater. And uh, the YouTube I've done on that actually has gotten the most attention of anyone that I've done. But you know, Bill Maher, the comedian, who is, now talk about overexposed. My mother thinks I'm overexposed. Uh, Bill Maher is everywhere. Larry King used to have mine, I think, like every other, you know, Tuesday or something. Well, Bill Maher hates religion. And the movie, Religious, as the title would suggest, it's just this ridiculous holdover from a primitive time. And his strategy in that movie was, consistently, to take people who, frankly, just weren't that capable of defending their faith and bringing before them what he thought were just ridiculous claims from the Bible. So you believe in this talking snake. Huh? You believe that the world is 5,000 years old. Huh? You believe that Jonah spent three days in the belly of the fish. So it just bringing forward all these kind of um, scenes from the Old Testament especially and challenging the uh, literalistic reading. Here's a first response now when I come again, up against this sort of biblical literalism. The Bible is not so much a book as a library. I think once you see that, an awful lot gets cleared up. The Bible is a collection of texts from a wide variety of genre, written at a wide variety of different times, written by different authors for different purposes. You've got in the Bible, sometimes some relatively straightforward history. Think of, you know, one and two Samuel or something. You've got an apocalypse in the Bible, like the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation. You've got letters in the Bible, like Paul to the Romans or Paul to the Galatians. You've got saga in the Bible, like the beginning of the book of Genesis. You've got gospels in the Bible, their own unique genre. Do you take the library literally? Well, it depends on what section you're in, right? You walk in the library, you walk into the history section, okay. You walk into a journalism section, you look at old newspapers. Yeah, you take that more or less straightforwardly. But now you wander into the poetry section. You wander into the mythology section. You wander into the epistolary uh, section. If you approach those texts with the same clunky interpretive lenses that you use to read literalistic texts, you will ipso facto misread them. One of the uh, uh, disciplines we learn in hermeneutics or interpretation theory is how to take off and put on different sets of glasses. One of the most fundamental questions you can ask about any text is what kind of text is this? In fact, earlier today, just in the other room there, we are talking about one of my favorite books, Moby Dick, because the former presidents of um, Elmhurst College reminded me of Herman Melville, these wonderful 19th century beards, you know. They all look like whalers just off the Pequod. Beautiful. <laughs> I had my picture taken one of them. I love, I love that era, you know. Well, you pick up a book like Moby Dick. Well, what is it? <laughs> what is the first question you have to ask? What is this? 
oh, it's a journalistic account of a whaling uh, adventure in the 19th century. No, come on, man. It's a novel, you know? Once you know it's a novel, you approach it with the right set of lenses. One of the most fundamental problems is a lack of genre sensitivity in regard to the Bible. And I see it everywhere on the YouTube forums. Either it's straightforward history or it's just nonsense. That's, that's the binary option. You know, one thing I found, and maybe there's some English teachers here, and they can really help us with this. I have found in the general populace an extreme insensitivity to the way literary texts mean. Do you know what I'm talking about? A deep insensitivity to the way poetry functions, the way mythology functions, the way a novel functions. They all function in a very distinctive manner. But so often my interlocutors say straightforward history or journalism, option A, or nonsense, option B. Come on. <laughs> There's all sorts of options in between those two. And the Bible is full of different genre. We have to be sensitive to that. It's hugely important, I think, as we do our work in evangelization. Something else now with the Bible. When I make this observation, I'm almost always met with the counter-argument. You're just cherry-picking. You're just deciding which texts you want to be literal, which ones you don't. And that gives me the opportunity to say, no, no. I'm insisting that we read the Bible within an interpretive tradition. Now, friends, I'm going to speak here very much out of the Catholic tradition. I don't think it's a good idea simply to pick up the Bible and read it. Just as I don't think it's a good idea to pick up Hamlet and read it. You know what I'm saying? Or pick up Moby Dick and just, I'm going to read it, and I understand how it works. Don't we, when we approach a text like Hamlet, a richly complex text, don't we automatically consult a long, disciplined, interpretive tradition? The long history of those who've read Hamlet, have wrestled with it, have argued over it. You pick up a book like Moby Dick, well, you, of course, you love to read all the critical history around the interpretation of it. Simply to pick it up on your own, without that preparation, without that discipline, is almost a guarantee that you'll misread it. So I argue with the Bible. We have to read it within the context of this richly disciplined and complex interpretive tradition that I would call the church. And here I'm not just restricting it to the Catholic Church. I mean the the whole community of those over space and time who've read the Bible. That, I think, is something very much missing as people try to understand the Bible today. Okay, so um, basically what we also discussed, no, just to show you, na ang pagbasa po ng Biblia, hindi lang basa straight na nagbasa ka at tinignan mo yung literal uh, trans Let me just stop sharing and go back to our view, no? uh, na hindi basa lang nagbasa ka at kung ano yung pagkakaintindi mo. Merong way of understanding the Bible. For example, pag sinabi mo yung word na chill, no? let us chill. Uh, pag narinig mo yung ating mga kabataan ngayon, pare, chill tayo, chill. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng chill? <clears throat> Diba? Mag-relax tayo, mag-ano tayo, hang out lang tayo, ganyan. Pero pag sinabi mo sa lolo mo yon, sa lolo, chill tayo. Anong pagkakaintindi ng lolo? Ba, baka buksan yung preset tapos isaksak yung ulo niya sa preset. Chill. No? So, ganun po, no? Uh, ganun ang dapat pagkakapagbasa natin sa Biblia. So now, I would just like to open up our uh, um, I would like to open up our interactive portion, you know, our synchronous portion. So kung meron kayong mga nice itanong, uh, we have time for that. Uh, nice yung i-comment, nice yung i-ano. Uh, let me first read the chat box. You know, meron mga, uh, wala namang questions dito. No? Puro ang nakalagay dito, paki-mute po. <laughs> Kasi kanina may mga nagsasalita. Siguro hindi nila marinig yung talk. Okay, just... Pindutin nyo lang po yung raise hand sa reactions portion of the bar. At yung kung meron kayong gusto sabihin, tanong, i-comment, bago tayo magtapos, uh, now is the time to do it. It's an interactive portion. Now let me ask you, what is your therefore understanding of reading 
and understanding the Bible. Kasi we are now going on an exercise, so a journey of reading the Bible. Next time, meron na tayong assignment. No? So naunawaan ba nating maigi kung paano how to read the Bible and understand it properly? Do we have comments? Do we have questions? No? Uh, wala ba? Pwede ba akong magtawag? <laughs> na magra-random, magra-random picking ako? Uh, hindi ko naman kayo kilalang lahat. At uh, wala namang maling sagot dito. No? Dahil uh, this is just... Uh, ano, uh, gusto ko lang malaman feedback from you. Mga feedback lang. Uh, oh, meron akong nakita rito na, napaka-intent ang pagtingin. Uh, Brother Nilo, ano bang pick up nyo sa ating talk ngayon? Ano ba ang uh, pag- pagkakaunawa nyo? Uh, meron ba kayong mga tanong? O kaya, uh, do you have a comment? Uh, Uh, ano expectation dito sa sa ating course uh, that we will we will embark on? Uh, actually, brother Dick, uh, uh, nag-undergo na ako ng ano Bible timeline yung Kajet Cabin. So, uh, uh, parang I have a idea already on uh, saan pupunta, kung paano ba masahin. And yung pinagdaanan ko is uh, na-appreciate ko like what you're saying about the literal sense and the symbolism and everything na yung New Testament is prefiguration of the Old Testament, so things like that. So, uh, so far, okay naman na, na ano ko. Na. But um, I have just one question. Kasi meron ako na encounter na in the book of Psalms, meron magkakaiba ng number. Like something like... Uh, Psalm 22 is different from the Psalm 22 that I'm reading now na NRSV. Pero yun na basa kong isa is sabi ko ba parang kasi yung Psalm 22 is very ano no uh, memorable sa akin the suffering servant. But doon sa isang Psalm 22 na nabasa ko parang that is Psalm 23 in, in NRSV and Psalm 22 in. So anong anong Bible yun? Uh, Doon nga po nagkakaiba ang interpretation, no? uh, yung translation rather, not interpretation, but uh, translation. No? Yung iba kasi, mayroong certain psalms na hinahati. Uh-huh. Kaya nagiging two numbers, hinahati nung nag-translate. So if you go from one translation to another, let's say from New, new American Bible to New, to the, ano yung ginamit yung isang Bible? Uh, NIV. Yeah, mm mm-hmm. Nag-iiba. Kung minsan pinagsasama nila yung dalawang sum at kung minsan ay pinag... Ini-split. Uh, ini-split. So, pero if you read the whole thing, pareho lang po yun, no Yung number lang ang magkakaiba kung minsan. Pero nangyayari lang naman po yan sa sum. Sa sum lang po nangyayari yan. Uh, doon sa ibang books hindi naman nangyayari. No? Sa sum lang. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank share you. Uh, some insights. Sorry po. You share some insights. Uh, Jerusalem Bible is doing that. For example, Psalm 22, quote, open parenthesis and close parenthesis, 23. So sa New Amer- Jerusalem Bible po, Bible po, ginagawa po niyan. Kaya nga po, uh, it is very important to check also the translations of the Bible that we are using. Because some of the translations are very near to the original text. And mostly, nakukuha po natin yung uh, direct interpretation of the text. The New American Bible is good uh, because shallow lang yung mga vocabularies, English na ginagamit. Community Bible is also good if you just wanted to uh, know the Word of God, reading it without any footnoting and etc. Pero ang Jerusalem Bible ay a little bit difficult dahil uh, very near po siya sa, sa original text. Kaya sometimes it is being used for 
those who are studying uh, theology, further studies about the biblical uh, studies, and etc. But all the Bibles are good. Oo. Kaya sabi nga po ni Brother D, it is in the interpretation of the people who translated it. Pero ang New American Bible, uh, ang Jerusalem Bible, yan po siguro ang nabasa nyo at magkaiba. Pero parehas lang din po yun. Dahil ang nilalagay lang po nila yun ay yung bracketing po kasi nagkakaiba. So in the, 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 the original text, dun sa Psalms, ay dire-diretso po yan. Dire-diretso po yan. Wala pong mga numbering. Numberings only came uh, later on. And then after that po, ang nangyari, uh, nagkukot and open parenthesis po sila as I said, for example, Psalm 22, open and close parenthesis, Psalm 23. So ganun po yun. For, tama po yun. It's just for the interpreta- interpretation po yun. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. Father Wilmer. Uh, can I uh, have a follow-up question? Uh, Father Wilmer, sa yung pong uh, Liturgy of the Hours, anong Bible po nakabase yung mga psalm niya? Hindi po. May dalawa po tayong version. Ang Liturgy ay meron pong Jerusalem. Meron din pong uh, Amerika. So kung titignan mo po, ang ginagamit natin mostly yung ginagamit po ng Asian ay American, ay Jerusalem. Kaya dahil yung prayer po natin ay uh, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Yung isa po ay glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without and amen. So it depends upon the translation po. So, kung meron po kayong uh, program, you can ay meron po kayong uh, ang gamit niyo po ay uh, ang gamit niyo po na phone ay uh, smartphone, pwede niyo pong i-download ang Universalis. Uh, Breviary po to, pero binabayaran siya. Tapos makikita niyo po yung detailed po doon. Ano ang gusto mong gamitin? Uh, Jerusalem translation ba or American translation? Okay. Thank you, Father. But both the same. For example, uh, nasa, nasa Ghana po ako, uh, yung breviary po natin dito na ginagamit ay hindi po siya pareha sa breviary na ginagamit nila sa Ghana. Yes. So the sound is different. The sound here is different. It depends upon the translation po na uh, gagamitin natin. But they are just the same. Wala pong problema yun. Wala pong question yun. Only that, the translators gave a different uh, interpretation, well, hindi naman siya interpretation, translation to the text. Yun lang po. Uh, Father Wilmer, meron pong isang uh, question dito. Hindi ko lang masagot kasi hindi ko pa nakikita ito. No? Uh, ang tanong niya, ano raw ang masasabi natin sa New Millennial Bible? Personally, I have not seen a New Millennial Bible. Yes. Yung New Millennial Bible po ay uh, approved po yan dito sa Philippines. Uh, particularly, they are using slang words. And a combination of, if you are reading the Tagalog, a combination of Tagalog and English. Just like Chris Aquino. So mostly, ang, 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 ang kanyang mga viewers or listeners naman sa Millennial ay yung millennial, yung mga teki. For example, uh, if Jesus has a cell phone, Jesus, uh, the, 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 the translation is uh, Jesus use the smartphone. Pero hindi po ganun. Si Jesus ay teki. So ganun po. So ginagamit po nila yung mga slang words of today, the words of the youth of today, para po ma-fit in po yung kanilang experiences on the uh, world of the Bible. Accepted ba yon? Well, naaprubahan naman, so it is accepted. So meaning to say, wala naman po siya sigurong nilalabag. Yun nga lang, sabi ko, the translator wanted it that they wanted to reach the millennial uh, uh, listeners or readers at this time. 
So, yun po. So, meron po siyang a touch of youthfulness doon sa uh, text na nababasa po natin. Parang, uh, for example, Jesus, si Jesus ay lumakad on the water. Something like that yung mga translator po na, translation po niya. Thank you, uh, Father Wilmer. Thank you. Uh, meron pa ba hubong mga nais magtanong? Kung uh, wala na po, uh, dahil uh, we have, uh, it's already almost 5 o'clock, 1 minute to 5. Uh, kung wala pong tanong, let me just continue. No? Uh, teka, may isang, may, isang nag, may isang question pa dito. Uh, Father, uh, Father Wilmer, merong follow-up sa inyo. Are you referring now to the Pinoy Bible, New Testament? Nakamute po kayo, Father. Nakamute po kayo, Father. Yes po. Wala pong translation ng millennial ng Old Testament. Only the New Testament po. Millennial Bible. Wala pong, wala pong translation ng Old Testament. Thank you, Father. Okay, so kung meron pa ba hong tanong? Meron pa bang... Uh... Ang tanong dito, meron daw bang plan na i-translate pati yung Old Testament? Naku, hindi ko po alam. <laughs> <laughs> hindi ko po alam. Si Bishop Pangkud, tama po ba ako yun? Si Bishop Opo, ba, Pangkud. Bishop ang, sa ako, sa ako na postulate po. Oo, ang kwan po yan. Mag, <laughs> hindi ko po alam. Pero mahirap po ang i-translate ang Old Testament kapag gagawin po nilang milenya. Okay. So, meron... Uh, teka. Uh, sabi Father, ito para... Yes po. Ito yon Ito yung book na New Testament, Pinoy version, na ni-encourage ni Bishop Pabilio. Kasi sa youth, maganda is... Ito eh, the present language ng mga youth, like for example, si Jesus... Nawala si sister. Naghang. Naghang lang. Naghang po siya. Oo. Uh, so, uh, balik po tayo sa ano, kung wala, kung meron bang iba. Pwede namang itanong ulit siya sa next session, ano, kung meron tayong mga hindi na itanong ngayon. Ano. Uh, ewan ko makaka-attend pa rin si Father Wilber sa next. Kung ma- dahil meron, itong ano kasi, itong uh, Millennial Bible, hindi pa rin ako nakakita niyan eh. Um, ibig sabihin, hindi na pala ako millennial. <laughs> uh, mas nakakirate po ang mga bata sa ganung language. May nagsabi. Yan. Uh, tama po yan. Pero meron pong... Uh, I was using this one before when I was in Ghana. There was a approved in America na catechism for children. And they translated the... I forgot the I forgot po yung title. Siguro kapag nasa kwarto po ako ay makikita ko. They translated the gospels year A, year B and year C the readings in a very low profile na translation. Uh, I forgot nga po yung yung author and accepted po siya sa Roman Catholic Church. In teaching the youth, particularly po yung mga children. So may imprimatur din ito, Father? Yes po. Kompleto po yan. Uh, we were using it in Accra, in, in Ghana, Accra. So it was published in America and the author was uh, composed of uh, biblical scholars, uh, mga teachers ng yung pre ano ba yon uh, yung mga maliliit na bata tawag school. doon preschool po yes so approve po yan approve po yan so they make it the bible na 
particularly yung cycle ABC na mas maintindihan po ng mga bata, ng mga young. And they can use it also in the church. They can use it also in the school, sorry, in the schools in teaching catechism. Kasi very low ang profiling ng explanation niya at mas madaling maunawaan ng mga youth at mga bata po. Kasi may illustrations, depende sa edad. Uh, may nagtanong, Father, available ba raw po dito yan sa Pilipinas? I- hindi po siya available dito sa Pilipinas, pero you can check it po via online. I'll, I'll send to you po yung, yung title of the book. I, I just forgot. Ipopost natin, mga kapatid, pag nasend po ni Father, popost natin sa ating messenger uh, group yun. So thank you na po, Father. Thank you very It's much for nice. that. Uh, Maganda rin po na basahin ninyo yung uh, The Scroll in the Garden of Eden, tama ba ako? By Rudolf Horst. Simplified po siya na Old and New Testament. And ang kanyang nanalo po siya, ng, nag-award po siya ng Cardinal Sin Award at uh, naging best-selling po siya dito sa Philippines. Ginawa po niyang novel ang uh, Old Testament hanggang New Testament. Anong title, Father? Uh, the Scroll in the Bible of Eden. Something like that. Masyadong mahina na ang aking memorya. Scroll in the Bible of Eden by Father Horse. Father Horse po siya. Oo. So madalis po yun na maunawaan natin, lalong-lalo na kung tayo po ay nagtuturo ng, sa mga kabataan, uh, mas uh, madali po yun. Scroll in the Garden of Eden. Something like that. Rudolf Thank Force. Thank you po. Salamat po, Father. Uh, may tanong pa ba? Kung... Wala na. Uh, kung wala na, uh, magpatuloy po tayo. Bibigay ko po sa inyo yung inyong uh, signatura, no? yung assignment uh, for our next session. By the way, there was a comment here that... Uh, Meron sa inyo mga nag-attend na ng Jeff Cavins, no? uh, Bible Timeline. Uh, let me just inform you that uh, I will not be using the Jeff Cavins model. No? Ang ginagamit ko lang kay Jeff Cavins are the 12 biblical periods. Uh, kay Jeff Cavins kasi po, uh, ikinikwento pa niya yung ano yung nakasulat, yung kwento dun sa, sa, sa period na yun. No? Sasabihin pa niya, meron tayong video ng kanyang kwento. Sa akin po, uh, hindi ko na po ikikwento sa inyo yun. I will, since we are all adults, this is basically a type of adult catechism. We are all capable of uh, reading the Bible uh, and um, getting the, the, the plain story of the Bible. Ang pag-uusapan po natin ay yung ano po ang implications no, sa ating salvation at ano po ang sinasabi. No? What is the message? No? The why? Rather than the what, meaning ano yung kwento, we will talk about the why. So, pag uh, yung sa mga in-assign ko, sana binasa nyo na ng tuluyan para yung mga dinidiscuss po natin ay uh, hindi ko na kailang ikwento ulit, kundi uh, nakakaunawaan na tayo. No? Uh, eto, binigay ni Father a scroll in the garden of Bible. A scroll <laughs> in the garden of bible by rudolf horst horst yan so yun po yung sinasabing uh, aklat ni uh, father wilmer okay so let me just uh, go now back to a share screen and i will give you your Uh, assignment for next week. Ah, hindi pala next week. Ang next pala pagkikita natin sa November 12. Mahaba-haba na bakasyon. So this is just an introductory 
uh, session. No? Um, so this is our lesson for November 12. No? Uh, November 12. So session 2, and we will talk about the period of the early world. Ito po ay, uh, ang covered po dito sa Bible ay ang Genesis chapters 1 to 11. Genesis chapters 1 to 11. Ito po ang ating pag-uusapan. And ang expectation po natin when we see each other ay nabasa niyo na po. No? So we will talk about what is written not uh, we will talk about why it why it was written and uh, how not the what ano hindi natin pag-usapan na yung kwento kundi ano yung bakit nasusulat yon no uh, and uh, uh, we will just refer to uh, certain portions of uh, that particular period and talk about matters like proto evangelium no that's one what is proto evangelium no, uh, hindi po nakasulat sa Bible yung exact word na proto-evangelium but we will see where it is there in Genesis 1 to 11 so uh, so uh, na, kung nakuha nyo na po yung ating assignment chapters 1 to 11 so uh, in uh, first letter of Peter uh, it is said, if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. No, how do we do this? By being familiar, no, with the Word of God. So, alam natin kung saan nang gagaling ang ating pag-asa and where our faith really comes from, no, which is the Word of God. And so, uh, just like Father said also earlier, sabi ni Saint Jerome, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. No. That is what St. Jerome said. No? And uh, I would like to uh, give you some reminders which I got from one of my professors, no? si Father Jun Lingad, who is a uh, doctor of theology also and uh, licensed in sacred uh, scripture. Uh, he always tells us no? before we end, always read the text in context. No? You have to remember that. Always read the text of the Bible in context. And he always tells us also, when you read, study, pray, scriptures, bring everything you have. Intelligence, memory, imagination, senses, experiences, training, and most especially, a new pair of eyes and ears. Hindi yung kamo, ah, ganyan ang pagkakaalam ko dyan. Hindi na ako pwede magpalit. A new pair of eyes and ears. And so if there is nothing more that we can say, let us uh, do our closing prayer. Let us all be still and know that uh, God is always with us. And God is with us in all ways. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we praise and thank you for this wonderful afternoon with your word. Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to glorify you. By studying your word, Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, continue to show us what the meaning of your word is. Holy Spirit, guide us in everything that we do, especially when we try to meditate and look for the message of the word and apply it to our lives. And brothers and sisters, let us listen to this uh, next song. As uh, ponder it in our, in our hearts and make this part of our closing prayer. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I hear you as my choice. I am hopeful for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. 
In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Salamat po, and uh, a good evening. Thank you, Brother Dick. Thank you po, everyone. Brother Dick, thank you. Father, thank you, Brother Dick. Thank you sa lahat. Maraming pong salamat din. Dami po namin natutunan ngayon, araw na ito. Thank you po, Brother Dick. Ibibigay ko po yung link sa YouTube sa inyo baka sa bukas po. Okay po, po salamat po. Uh, ano po sa sa ating uh, salamat po. messenger. Thank you po. Okay, salamat po. Okay po. Bye-bye po.
Brother Dick? Yes. Oh, Sister Brami. Uh-uh. Ta? 